welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 236. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out the podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your date to chat about all those things with me. So yes, I am going to pop quickly on the screen where you can follow me on the interwebs. I am most active on Instagram and Ravelry. And as always, email is the best way to get in touch and receive a timely response from me. Uh, and yes, so welcome. And yes, it is, it is hot out, you guys. I don't know if you can tell, but the windows are closed right now because it is super noisy outside. I got a late start to recording because there was some jackhammering outside, there was some car alarmage, and just recently somebody revved up, had their motorcycle revved up for, I, I would guess, for about a half an hour. So there was a slight delay, but we're, we're gold now. We, we can, I can record and hopefully, fingers crossed, the silence will hold. Uh, I have a couple of announcements before I get, in, before I get into uh, what I've been making this week, uh, and that is that I'm going to be doing another trunk show, or Volenvine Yarns will be doing another trunk show at Do You Knit, which is an amazing, wonderful uh, LYS local yarn shop in Westfield, New Jersey. Uh, and this will be my third trunk show there, so uh, I'm super excited. Can you tell? Uh, but yes, it will be on Saturday, June 24th at 10 a.m. So if you can make it, I hope you can come. Uh, you know, I, I love meeting people and customers in person and getting to chat with you guys. So. I love it, I'm all about it. So I hope you can make it. There will be a blip of time where I don't have a shop update. I think like a two week blip, if you will, where I will not update the shop because I will be in trunk show prep mode. So just a heads up. But anyway, so aside from that, we do have some knit alongs that are currently underway. And if you'd like to, I will, I will be talking about them throughout the episode, but if you would like any details on the knit alongs that we are currently uh, partaking in, uh, definitely hop over to the Yarngasm Ravelry group where you can get all the details for them. We have the, uh, the Box of Socks Cal, which is a year-long knit-along. We have the Move Along, which is currently underway. Uh, it's a knit-along that I'm co-hosting with Shauna from Adelaide Cottage. There's also the Curious Handmade Along, which is wrapping up very quickly. Uh, the, the deadline for that to get all your FOs into the FO thread is on June 1st. And then we also have another knit along, which I'm super excited to talk about, and I'll get into that once I show you what I've been working on this week. So, okay, without further ado, uh, let's get into what's on my needles. All right, so no finished objects this week. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping to have my apple blossom socks done for the Curious Handmade Along. I will be totally honest, I was very focused on my, my shawl design, which I'm very excited about and I'll talk about in a little bit, but first things first, uh, let's talk about my eyeball shawl, which is a pattern by Stephen West, and it looks like an eyeball, or that's the idea. And yeah, so this is part of the Keep Knitting Kitten Cal, uh, which is a which is a knit along co-hosted by Hannah of the Corner of Craft podcast, along with Becky, from the Stitching in High Notes podcast. And yeah, they're doing a Stephen West along and they dubbed it appropriately, Keep Knitting, Kitten, Cal. So yeah, I was, and they're allowing whips. So I, you know, of course had to jump on board because I have this underway. So I am loving this shawl pattern so much. It is so potato chippy and so relaxing to knit and fun, fun. May, fun is the keyword here, but yeah, uh, you're probably tired of me talking about it, but for the, the iris, or I'm sorry, I always confuse the iris and the pupil. The pupil is Skinny Dipping Yarns in her Space Pants colorway. Yes, I said it right this time. <laughs> That's usually a tongue twister for me. Uh, and then the, for the iris, I'm using her Olives colorway, also Skinny Dipping. And then for the Scalera, I am using La Bien MA, gateway in the Gateway Purple colorway and I really, really love the way this is turning out. Uh, if you have been following the podcast, uh, you know that I was waiting for a second skein of Gateway Purple because a wonderful podcast viewer informed me that I would need two skeins uh, to complete the, the white of the eye. So uh, you can tell here that I started out, I couldn't wait anymore, so I just cast on. I, I started knitting the sclera with uh, one skein, and then the second skein finally came after a month of waiting, because it got stuck in customs, like these things usually do. Uh, I started alternating between 
the two skeins. And if you're wondering why, uh, because when you're working with hand dyed yarn, no two skeins are exactly alike. So I just, you know, didn't want an inconsistency where it's like one side of the white of the eye would be lightly speckled and then risk having the other part of the eye be being like heavily speckled. So I decided to alternate between both skeins. So you can tell it just, I wasn't, I was not expecting this, but you can tell towards the beginning of where I cast on for the white, uh, it's not as speckly, but then it just kind of goes into like this ombre of heavy speckles right here. And I really love that effect. So totally unexpected, but really loving the way it's turning out. So yay. Um, so yes, yeah, slow but steady progress on it. Highly recommend this pattern. It's very, it's not as hard as it seems, uh, and it's fun. It's a really fun pattern, uh, and these colors are totally me. So I'm, I'm really loving it. So that is where I am with my eyeball shawl. And again, the the knit along is Keep Knitting Kitten Cal, uh, hosted by Hannah of Corner of Craft and Becky from Stitching in High Notes. So uh, definitely check out their podcast because they are a lot of fun. Uh, they're actually two neighbors. They're living in Berlin. Unfortunately, Hannah is moving away, and um, yeah, they won't be neighbors anymore. And I'm gonna I'm gonna miss them talking about how they hang out all the time. But anyway, <sighs> anyway, uh, hopefully they will continue to podcast and. I will be able to enjoy their podcasts. So anyway, I'm rambling. Um, and my nose is itching like crazy. The other thing that I've been working on this week is actually living in my Toad Hollow bag, which is a project bag that I purchased from my last trunk show at DUNIT, which I think was in, I wanna say November. Wow, it seems so long ago. But anyway, I purchased this there. And uh, yeah, it's this is going to be a big project, guys. And I talked about it, I teased it last week. Uh, I had been watching uh, Ellie from Skein Dare Knits, and she showed this really beautiful pattern by Pini Guri of, um, she's a designer on Ravelry, and I'm totally blinking on her real name. But anyway, Pini Guri on Ravelry, she designed this beautiful cardigan pattern, and it's called uh, Damiaka Lopa, and I, again, People told me I pronounced it right, so I hope I pronounced it correctly again. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful colorwork cardigan, and I was just so smitten by it. I was like, I have, I, I just immediately purchased yarn for it. And it calls for, you can use other yarns, but uh, I believe the pattern did call for Jameson Spindrift. And yeah, I purchased yarn and it arrived, and there's just so many skeins that this bag is perfect for holding all of it. I'm probably gonna need a bigger bag for it, but for now, it's perfect. Uh, and I, I cast on a swatch. The swatch is done, or almost done, but here we go. Uh, and I'm swatching in the round, and I'm, of course I'm swatching for this because this is gonna be a serious undertaking, guys. I, I'm i very excited about it, so that that's a good sign. If I'm swatching for it and I'm excited about it, um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it will actually get done because I have quite a few cardigans languishing, waiting to be finished, or frogged, I don't know. Um, but right now I'm very excited about this one and it's just making my heart sing so much. Um, so yeah, this will be the main body. These two colorways will be the main part of the cardigan and then these will be part of the yoke or the this intricate design right here. And again, Jameson Spindrift fingering, uh, obviously black and uh, this is, it's not white, it's actually kind of like a, uh, I think, I believe it's their granite colorway. And then this darker gray right here is heron. And then, of course, of course, if I'm knitting a colorwork cardigan, I'm going to include mauve in there. So uh, I guess this could count as part of my mauve along that I'm hosting, co hosting with Shauna of Adelaide Cottage. Because, yeah, I. I'm so bad. I wanted to cast on a pair of socks. I wanted to cast on the Fairy Hill shawl by Helen Stewart for the mauve along. And I just I have not gotten around to it. Um, and I want to cast on a pair of socks. I know I'm going off on a total tangent, but I really want to get my apple blossom socks done and off the needles before I cast on a new pair of socks because we all know what happens when I just put down a pair of socks and I'm working on and cast on something new. It never gets finished. So anyway, I digress. <sighs> I'm going to kind of start, I'm going to count this as part of the mauve along because there is mauve in here, there is mauve, and uh, I will I will be casting on something else movie when I get the chance, but uh, yeah, okay, and <laughs> I wanna get the colorways right. Um, so there was black, there was uh, heron, there was um, granite, which is the light, granite was the light gray, and then uh, cyclamen is this mauve color. I have no idea what a cyclamen is, I should probably look 
look it up online. Uh, and then we have Dewdrop, which is this beautiful kind of minty green teal right here. Um, but as you can see, I'm glad that I did do the swatch. Oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. And this like olive green right here is Bracken. I don't know if you can see it. But um, I'm so glad that I did the swatch because I'm actually going to be swapping the placement of, um, I'm gonna be swapping the the dewdrop with the Bracken just to give it more more contrast because again, it is color work when we have two colorways that are of the same tone, uh, it kind of gets muddled in the pattern. So I think it'll be a good idea for me to swap or uh, switch out those two colorways and their placement. So yay, uh, but wait, that's not all. Uh, so. As I mentioned, I just I learned about the pattern through Ellie of Skein Dare Knits, which is an amazing podcast. You should totally check her out. Um, she does amazing, awesome color work and traditional, mainly traditional uh, knits. Um, although she does dip her toes into uh, like Stephen West patterns more recently and everything, but she's she's the queen of color work knitting, and in my opinion. But uh, yeah, so she contacted me on Instagram and she, you know, was like, hey, you know, I want to knit this pattern and you're knitting this pattern, let's do a knit along. So I was like, yes, okay, that makes perfect sense. So we are just going to co-host a knit along for the Damiaka Lopa uh, cardigan. So whoever wants to join in on the fun, feel free to do so. We're keeping the deadline very open, very flexible. Uh, you know, if you want to, there's no definitive start date, so I guess we're just officially announcing it on Thursday. I think she posted her, uh, she already posted a, a podcast episode today, so if you've watched it already, you probably she probably talked about it. Um, but yes, Thursday, today, when I'm recording, I'm announcing it, or we're announcing it, so I guess that this counts as our start date. And we don't have a definitive deadline, so we're keeping it very open, as I mentioned. Uh, and, you know, we'll just see where everyone is, and then, you know, once it looks like people are starting to have finished objects or getting close to having a finished object, we'll set a deadline uh, and, you know, do giveaways and prizes and whatnot. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and again, it does require staking, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who pointed me in some really good uh, directions as far as, you know, uh, staking tutorials and tips. Uh, I know there was one, uh, Penny Guri, has a really in, a really informative one within the pattern itself I believe uh, with pictures and everything uh, the knit more girls did a uh, periscope video on I think it's available on YouTube but they did a, a live periscope on how to steak a cardigan and uh, there's another one very pink knits I believe does a steaking tutorial as well so anyway uh, I have a nice little res a nice little uh, list of resources that I can refer to for uh, steaking and of course I will probably be documenting the live <laughs> like in, of me steaking in action because you know who, who does not want to see someone steak for the very first time oh goodness all right um so anyway, yay, that's where I am with that. Uh, I think I'm going to finish knitting the swatch and then block it. I think I've gotten Gage. Gage is we're gold. Uh, I did have to purchase some new uh, needles for my interchange, my high high sharps, in my high high sharp internet, high high sharp international. What? Anyway, um, I did have to purchase some new <laughs> needles for my high high sharp interchangeable cords. Uh, I bought, I have the kit, but, uh, the pattern calls for, uh, US size, uh, 2.5, uh, or three millimeter needles. And my kit did not come with that. So I hopped onto Amazon and purchased some 2.5, three mil, US 2.5, three millimeter needles. So, um, yeah, so loving it. Uh, it's great. And yay. And yeah, lots of, lots of ends to even, but it's a swatch. So I'm not going to really really worry about that. Maybe I'll, you know, save the swatch and turn it into a little, a little notions pouch or something. I don't know, because it is pretty. Uh, so, okay, yeah, that is pretty much all I've really worked on all week. Um, well, aside from that, I do have my shawl design, which I can't talk too much about because it is still kind of, I want to keep it under wraps until it's all done, blocked, and I can photograph it and share it with you. Uh, so yeah, I like, keeping things a secret until they're done, if you know what I mean. But I guess I can just kind of give you an idea of where I'm going with it. Uh, I did tease it on a couple of a couple of episodes ago. I showed you which colorways I was using. Um, I have since started over using a totally different colorway palette. Uh, I, I'm using three colorways. I'm using uh, Paranormal and Grim and Coven, which I'm currently using right now. So this is my Coven colorway and it's on my new Vaux base, which is 100% superwash merino, uh, it's single ply. 
and I love the way the colorways are playing together and what else can I tell you about it uh, yeah but you know it while I'm using three colorways I'm toying with the idea of adding a fourth colorway but it's going to be one of those patterns where you can use as many or as little colorways as you want so I would recommend two colorways uh, but you can use again however many what are you have fun with it that's the whole idea um, and it's very potato chippy it's very intuitive uh, and that's that's all I'm gonna say and I'm having a lot of fun with it I'm very proud of it and yeah I, it's just it's all I've wanted to work on uh, all week and I you know I've been neglecting some other projects that I really want to finish as well so um, but yeah so hopefully if not next week the week after I should have something for you guys because yeah anyway I'm very excited about it um, and I just want to say reiterate uh, that yes um, I know there's some of you who have offered to test knit but please no requests for test knits right now because I do have a handful of test knitters that I go to regu regularly uh, so if I need more I will definitely put a call out for that but in the meantime uh, please no requests to test knit uh, so yes unfortunately there has been no spinning so we're not gonna have a spinning segment this week uh, I know I, I'm partaking in the mini scrap along hosted by Tommy of the squirrel pie productions podcast but I gotta put a dent in that. It's it's such a small bump of fiber that there's no excuse why I shouldn't have it done already. And there's a motorcycle. Of course I have to live on the block with the motorcycle, right? Right? Go. Shoo. So anyway, no spinning to speak of this week. Uh, sewing! <laughs> I was hoping to have something to show you guys because Saturday I the whole morning I printed out, as I, as I mentioned, I was hoping to um, sew up the Quick Sew K3678 hoodie. Um, I printed out the, the, the pattern, I pasted everything together and cut out all the pieces, cut out the fabric, and then I had a mega snafu uh, situation. It's an acronym, I can't say it on the podcast because this is family friendly. Uh, but yeah, it's it, basically I messed up royally. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> to the point where I actually had to throw out the entire project. It was that bad. Uh, so ideally it's supposed to be a fairly simple project fairly and it was it's very simple to sew um i was gliding through it i was so happy with it and then i it came to so setting in the sleeves sewing in the sleeves and i realized all right something is not right here and after 30 minutes of trying to figure out what was going on i realized that i had sewn the wrong sides of the front to the back so what was this front and this front should have been so to the back but no i flipped them so I had one pocket opening here on this side and then another pocket opening here in the middle and it, I mean, you're probably thinking, Kristen, just take a seam ripper and rip it all out. No, no. I surged, I surged all the seams and you know when you surge seams, there's just no turning back. You can't undo what you did. Like I hate throwing out fabric. It feels super wasteful, but there was just no saving it. Yeah, it was just, it was a lost cause. You live and you learn. I just have to be more mindful of what piece I'm sewing to what piece. So anyway, there's that. Uh, and then I'm trying to think what else did I want to talk about. Yeah, that was it for sewing. Uh, I do want to sew another lady skater dress. I have some fabric for that. Uh, but otherwise... Yeah, so anyway, I have a feeling this is going to be a very short episode because that's all I have to talk about this week. Um, so I'm going to move along to shop update because I am having a shop update tomorrow, uh, May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So without further ado, let me go get my basket of yarns uh, that have skeins that will be in the shop. Okay, so as I mentioned, I will be having a shop update tomorrow, Friday, May 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and I hope you guys can make it. Uh, but just a couple of announcements. Uh, not only, first, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I will be having a trunk show at DU Knit in Westfield, New Jersey on Saturday, uh, June 24th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Why I should say Eastern, I don't know, because if you're local, you're gonna know what time it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there's that. And then also, uh, as I mentioned in the previous weeks, Kelsey from Primrose Yarn Company and I have uh, been collaborating on two colorways, two very limited edition colorways uh, that will be for sale in our shop and sold as a set on June 5th. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, she will be having a shop update at 7 p.m. Eastern time and I will be having mine at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you missed out on 
any yarn for sale in her shop on the sets in her shop you have another opportunity to catch uh the sets in my shop at 8 p.m eastern time uh so yeah there's that i'm super excited about it uh, i think i showed the colorway off last week here it is again uh this is i've decided to call this one reef madness and it's on my Volca base, which is 80% uh, superwash uh, merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And she's she dyed her colorway on a base uh, very similar uh, to mine, so it's also a superwash merino nylon cashmere blend. It's on her Sophia base, so you'll get one skein of this and then one skein of uh, what Kelsey dyed. And I will have those. I should have those. I, I will have her colorway to show uh, on the podcast next time uh, with this, so you can see what the whole set looks like. But we had a lot of fun coming up with these colorways, and we decided to stick to a neon theme because summer neon. Uh, and yeah, I again had so much fun dyeing this, and I decided to call this one Reef Madness because it reminded me of a radioactive coral reef, and I was like, you know what, that that name. Just resonates so yay there's that so i also have a couple free swim colorways that will be in the shop uh this one is o sherbert also on my volca base and this is kind of i named it based if you're familiar with ravelry whenever there's like a page that they can't find there's like a sheet that comes up that says o sherbert so that's what i call this one uh, and then this one was also a free swim uh tipsy flamingo also on volca that one. This is also a free swim colorway. Uh, I actually have a lot of free swim colorways this week, you guys. But um, here it is on Volca. And again, I, I, I want to say this was the prototype for the collaboration colorway I did for the Primrose collaboration that I'm doing with Kelsey. Uh, and but yeah, it's not. It's not what I wanted it to be, but I still think it's a cool colorway. So it's going in the shop. Uh, I will have quite a few of these, uh, and I named it Iguana Party. Like iguana, but like iguana party. I'm so cheesy. Anyway, this will be in the shop as well. And yeah, it'll just be on Volca. Then I will have some dirty on purpose. Here it is on Blitz, my gold Selena base. And then Footsie, my BFL, Superwash BFL nylon base. Uh, and then I will have some tea leaves. What's that? Here it is on Nouveau, and here it is on Volca at the bottom. And I really, really love the way Tea Leaves and Dirty on Purpose look together. I actually posted it on Instagram a while back, but I don't know, something about these two colorways just goes so well together, and I might have to, I might have to knit something out of them uh, together. Got Date Cake, uh, here it is on Footsie, and then here it is on Blitzed at the bottom. And then I dyed up some, or I try, it's been a while since I dyed up some Poe, which is my, um, it's kind of like a shaded, like a warm shaded uh, light gray. But again, it's been a while since I dyed it up and sometimes when that happens, my formula method goes awry or I, I try to, do, I, for some reason I do something a little different. So these turned out a little, these are, these are misfits because they turned out a little bit darker than usual the tone's not quite right so but they're still pretty i really like the way they turned out but it's not it's not po to a t you know so these will be in the shop as misfits one of the batches just did not turn out right at all so i over dyed it uh and it turned i just made it like a red and i really like I, it kind of looks like mexican hot chocolate so i named it mexican hot chocolate but labeled it as a misfit um so this will be in the shop as a misfit um and yeah for some reason i use totally different dyes but they came out looking like Mexican hot chocolate so Mexican hot chocolate it is uh, so there's that and then I think I think I think I think that is all oh no 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 there's more uh, I will have paranormal in the shop so here it is on new faux and then here it is on footsie and I will have uh, all of these colorways dyed across four separate bases I will have them on nouveau footsie Volca and blitz so yay! Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna see if I can get some dyeing done today. Um, I know Thursdays it's a little tough sometimes, uh, just because of you know I got a late start podcasting or whatever. But if not today, tomorrow I'm going to do my best to dye some uh, grim to have in the shop for tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned for that. So again, I hope you can make the shop update again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you can make it. Uh, and yeah. So without further ado, oh 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 oh. 
but wait, wait, there is gonna be something else in the shop, you guys. Uh, I almost forgot to talk about this. Uh, I finally got Woolen Vine Yarn tote bags for the shop. So, yay! Woolen swag, as I like to call it. Um, yeah, just a simple tote bag. You can pop your yarn, your projects in here. Super handy. Who doesn't love a good tote bag? Plus, they're gothy goth black. So it goes with everything. Yay! Okay, shop update. Hope you can make it. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna move along to Blather, where I chat about what's been going on my life, going on in my life. Should you care to stick around and hear about it? Okay. So as far as what's been going on in my life, uh, last Sunday was Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, I hope you had a really nice day. Got to spend time with your family. Uh, and if you don't celebrate Mother's Day, then I just hope you had a really nice, relaxing weekend. Uh, and yeah, just enjoyed the day. Uh, but yes, I went up to visit my parents and Dennis went to see his parents so we we both went to Grand Central and hopped on two separate trains going in different directions so uh that was that was kind of a first but uh yeah that you know it was nice to get out of the city I got to spend some time with my mom uh and I showed her how to sew well I tried uh she, I don't think she was really in the mood to she wanted me to show her how to sew but I don't think she was in the in the mindset when I got there and I ended up having I ended up sewing or hemming pants for my dad um he brought her over like a whole pile of pants that he needed hemmed. I'm like, whoa, 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 I did not come up here to hem all your pants. So <laughs> I hemmed one pair of pants for him because uh, that's, you know, I didn't have all day up there. He didn't expect me to do. He just like, you know, I like pick your favorite pair and I will hem them for you. So I showed them how to hem pants. Um, and my dad even said, you know, oh, I could probably even do that. I'm like, yeah, you could. It's super easy. Uh, so I showed them step by step how to do it. And uh, so that was fun. Uh, my mom got a little more acclimated with her new sewing machine. Uh, and yeah, then we went out for sushi and it was really nice. So uh, there is that. And then, yeah, otherwise this, oh, oh, oh. And the other big news is uh, Dennis and I, we got a new car, a new used car. So uh, it was time to get a new car. Dennis was getting tired driving it. Um, it was having some, you know, a couple of issues. So we're like, you know, we do, we during the summer, we do like to take some long road trips. So uh, it, we just, he felt like it wasn't the safest bet anymore to, you know, from New York to Cape Cod usually. So um he you know pulled the trigger this weekend we got a new used car it's really awesome and uh yeah it drives like a dream and bonus it has heated seats because we constantly fight over the, either the air conditioner or the heat during the winter and summer it's it's nuts so and i i run cold so um especially during the winter you know it's like raining and he has to keep the ac on and you know to prevent the windows from fogging up i am so happy that the heats that the seats are heated so I don't have to sit there freezing all the time. So anyway, very excited about that. Uh, so looking forward to all the road trips we will be doing this summer. In other news, I caught the season finale of Once Upon a Time and spoiler alert, I'm gonna pop a time code in the down bar in case you wanna jump ahead because I'm gonna drop a whole bunch of spoilers. So I have some gripes about the season finale about of Once Upon a Time because Okay, yeah, as I mentioned, spoiler, they're not going to bring back any of the main characters next season. They kind of capped things off. They gave them their all, they gave everyone a happy ending. Awesome, right? But <laughs> the biggest gripe that I had about this is because they gave, while they gave everyone a happy ending, it's set, their lives are so normal now. It's so like, they're, like, there's no adventures. It's not magical anymore. Everything's fine and dandy. And they're just going about their normal mundane lives now. It's so weird. I don't know. I, I just really would have hoped or expected them to end up in the Enchanted Forest or some kind of other fairy tale end where they had originally come from because, I don't know, I feel like that would have made more sense. But no, they're, they're all still living in Storybrooke and living a happy, fine and dandy life. I don't know. That was just me. Uh, but next season, they're going to turn things around. They're going to have a new a new writer, a new, um, I guess, savior, savior or something. I don't know. It's, it's weird. I don't know. I just, I don't know why this bothered me for two days. <laughs> it's so bizarre. It's just a series, but I was really unhappy with the way they ended it. And I don't know. I'll give the next season a chance. It's not like, you know, I just feel like the writing on that show has just gone downhill so much, but, uh, anyway, um, now I have to find something else to watch because it's over and Harlots just ended, I believe. Uh, I think it was like, it's a short season. Eight, I think there are like eight episodes per season. Anyway, they made it seem like that was the season finale for that. So yeah, I'm on the prowl for some new, um, new TV shows to watch while I knit. Uh, but Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Outlander, I think those are coming up pretty soon. 
we'll see but uh yeah anyway i feel like i'm rambling on way too much like i usually do in this segment so i'm gonna cap it off there uh and leave you guys to it so Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, as always, you can find show notes over at www.yarngasmpodcast.com. Leave some comments in the Yarngasm Ravelry thread if you have any questions. And I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Bye. Ba -da -da. other thing that I've been working on this week is actually living in my toad hollow bag, um, project bag. Whoops. <laughs> am I, what, what is this? What am I doing here? Why? Fireworks? <laughs>